Hello, Slashaholics. Tonight's episode is brought to you by 80stees.com. Check out this Day Live shirt I got. I came here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. What'd you get, Alex? Well, my lifelong dream of finally being in the Cobra Crimson Guard has come to fruition. I am a full-fledged member of the Crimson Guard for Cobra, so my life's work is complete. Thanks to 80stees.com. And you can go to 80stees.com right now and find shirts uh, from your favorite cartoons. Favorite movies? Favorite horror movies? Favorite TV shows? And so much more. And on top of that, just for you Slashaholics, you get to benefit from this too. 30% off your purchase at the site. All you got to do is type in the promo code at checkout, slash tracks 30. Be sure to look in the description and pin comment for that promo code. It's going to save you a lot of money on some amazing shirts. Yeah, 30% off is definitely a very good discount, and it's even more of an amazing discount when you think about how quali- like how high quality of the shirts are and what the properties that you're able to have put on these shirts. So and it's an amazing fast. deal. And they get to you really fast. It does not take long at all. No. Uh, one other thing I was going to say about this amazing deal is I don't think I've ever worn a shirt that was better screen printed. This shirt is like perfectly centered. Uh, oh, yeah. Perfectly centered. Whoever's running the press over there, Kudos, bravo, bravissimo, 80stees.com, amazing work. And thank you for sponsoring this episode. Check out the animated intro, and we'll be right back with you. Good evening, and welcome to episode number 10 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, uh, I feel like I haven't uh, seen you uh, on, in this format for at least two weeks. Has it at been least, that long? At least two weeks, yes. Yeah. Uh, can you tell the Slashaholics why it's taken two weeks, uh, what's been going on, maybe what we've been doing? Uh, since the last episode? Well, we, uh, as you saw at the beginning, we have a new sponsor, 80stees.com, which is awesome. Uh, amazing website, especially if you're a product of the 80s or the 90s. It's not just the 80s. they got plenty of stuff from past decades uh, all the way up to the present. Um, and also, we put out a new episode of Slash Tracks, episode 29. We watched Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. It's performing really well right now, and thanks to Alex, I had to watch two shitty movies in the past two weeks. Um, we'll get into we'll get into your take on Scream Five in a little bit uh, down the road here. But I, the first most important question that I have, I have two questions, and that the Slashaholics all have: What are you drinking tonight? What soda are you drinking? Just Pepsi. I got one Crystal Pepsi left, and I don't know if it's coming or not. I'm going to find okay. out why. So it's sitting in the fridge, just drinking some Pepsi. Okay, so you're drinking a Pepsi out of a straw. You're a little fancy now that we're sponsored. Now you got a straw. Make sure you put your pinky up, okay, because now you're like Hollywood. Okay, Josh is Hollywood now. He's got a straw. And number two, um, I was going to say, I want to thank everybody, and I'm sure Josh does too. Episode number 10 of Slash Tracks Action News recently went over 
50, <laughs> episode number nine. Episode number nine. Recently went over 50,000 views. So I want to thank everybody who helped contribute to the success of that episode. And I'm sure Josh feels the same way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's like this whole thing with the YouTube system. Not going to get into it. It's showing 43K right now, but it is at 50,426 50, at the moment. So thank you all so much for that. Yeah, that's really exciting. Uh, that's the complete opposite of the way it was when I was a child. It's like, you know, being a fat kid, a loud kid, growing up in grade school, you know, not being picked last, uh, wanting to play baseball, uh, batting last uh, for most of my childhood. Sometimes the recess would get over before I'd even get the bat because I'd be like the last one uh, in line to hit. Uh, going from that kind of low to the high of highs of 50,000 views, Josh, uh, I don't know, man. Dreams come true. First, first I joined the Crimson Guard, then we got fifty thousand views. Man, life is good. I think it's the titles and the thumbnails that Alex comes up with. I, I think, think that's uh, pulling people in, and they're in. A, you know, we pull them in, and, and they don't want to go away. I think it might be Josh's hair, and I. It, you know what? I think that's it. I think that's one A and one B. Josh's hair, because. From episode to episode, we get to see the evolution of his hair, and it's getting better and better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh, one question before we get into the first segment of the night, the mean comment and good comment. Mean comment, nice comment. Josh, what is the current percentage for a nuclear grizzly attack right now? Uh, I'll have to check with our with our weather slash uh, bear expert one second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, okay. And he's a nuclear scientist as well, so... Wow. Okay, it's about 33% chance across the nation right now. Things are crazy. Okay, okay. Yeah, so pretty 30, low. Pretty low. You know, well, no, no, that means that 33% of the nation will be attacked. That's how... A lot of people don't know that. That's a, that's a fun fact for you, for me. Like on the weather, when you hear 25% chance of rain, 50% chance of rain... Yeah. It's not saying that there's a 25% chance of rain's going to fall... It's a hundred percent chance the rain's going to fall, but only twenty five percent of the area they're talking about is going to be affected. So thirty three percent of the country is going to be affected by nuclear grizzlies. Thirty three percent of the United States is going to be attacked <laughs> Maybe by nuclear is. grizzlies immediately. They're definitely going to be out there. Yeah, definitely going to happen. Um, hopefully, they do not have their chainsaws with them today because people are going to be attacked, according to Josh's nuclear physicist that we apparently have in the budget now. So and Josh what, can afford and a bear expert. Yeah, Josh uh, got us a bear expert, a nuclear physicist, and straws for his Pepsi at home since we yeah. signed with 80stees.com. I have bought nothing uh, for myself or the show. So you can tell where Josh's head's at, where mine's at, okay? Uh, Josh, let's let's do mean comment, nice comment. Okay. So what do you want to do first? You said you you tell me beforehand it's nice comments. So yeah. we'll do this first, and we'll end, we'll end it on a low. This time. Okay, okay. All right. First nice comment of episode 10. Laughed the entire riff. I've never done that with MSTK or MST3K. Is that uh, on Pumpkinhead? That was on Waxworks. Oh, wow. Kalana, Kalana Milik, Kalana Milik 1. So that's his name. Yeah, so hey, man. KK? Thanks, thanks for the big ups. Thanks for the great comment, and we salute you here. The Slashaholics, you are a true Slashaholic, buddy. I wonder if sometimes fans in other countries like use the subtitle system, and sometimes they laugh even harder because YouTube messes it up. Like the transcript for our last episode had our theme song saying that instead of to watch these movies, it said to watch these booties. Um, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I... Um, I, I'm surprised that we even have a transcript. That's amazing that YouTube transcribes what we say word for word and puts it in the description of each episode we have because we say some wild and crazy crap sometimes. So it's funny just to see it. And also it's crazy to see how many times I say like and um. It's annoying when I see that. <laughs> Did, you go through it? Did you go through it? I look. I was looking at it the other day and I was like, I, I just said like again. I was like, man, I say like and um far too many times for my own taste. Uh, good comment. So nice comment. Number two of the episode. First YouTubers I've heard nail riff comedy. Tamish Salil. 
and that is on Blood Wings. So that's on uh, Slash Tracks episode number 29. So according to him, we're the first YouTubers in all of history that have actually nailed riff comedy. Like, got it down completely. Nailed like, it. We're the best. We're the ghosts, best. according to this one guy. I feel like our Pumpkinhead riff was the best we've done so far. It just, it gave us so much material from the time that, shh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, you making Pumpkinhead a pimp. <laughs> just uh, See, that's funny because... Seen it, you can see it. That's funny that you say that because I feel like you were the star of that episode because you had so many things like when the like when you said Shh, they can hear us like they could hear it and then when the cameraman or like the camera went sideways and they're like just keep rolling you had some stuff that was just gold so yeah you, to, you had the uh, are they hitting on me and that became a running gag you know <laughs> and uh, I made too many period pit. jokes. I mean, too many period jokes. I pissed somebody yeah, off. Yeah, how dare you? Uh, how dare you? I mean, it's Blood Wings, and the gang is Red Wings. What, what am I supposed to do? You know, the 12-year-old inside of me is like, I got to get out. You know what, though? We should make, like, a nice, bad sandwich here. You did two good ones. Maybe yeah. do the bad one and then end it with the with the last good one. Let's do that, because in my history of being fired or ha- being written up at work, that's usually how they do it. So let's just stick to the format for my life here. Uh, okay. mean comment, and this was kind of just directed at Josh, but Josh would have never had a successful YouTube channel had he not done a multitude of things, so this guy can just kiss our ass, so anyway, this guy says, stick to narrating, channel used to be good, and that's from Pube G Mobile, so we're just going to call him Pube, so, mobile. yeah, Mobile Pubes says, stick to narrating, channel used to be good. What are your thoughts on that, Josh? It hurt my feelings. Like I, I just, I'm going to shut everything down. Uh, no, this one guy. I've narrated over sixty books. I'm still doing them. They come out slower now, but I'm still doing them. I'm not stopping them. And I have so much, so much fun doing the podcast slash tracks. And I'm prioritizing them now because I built a library. I've, I've fulfilled the eighty slasher library and prophecy. There is literally a library of books on the channel and I'm going to keep adding to it, but I'm also going to do these other projects. Um, and it seems like people are enjoying them. So, well, so yeah, pubes. I, t- I told pubes, Josh, I commented immediately back to him when I saw that I said, well, that's interesting because there's like 45,000 other people that would disagree with you. So, you know, kiss our ass, I guess. And I'm a member of the crimson guard for Cobra. So you don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a wild card. First of all, and Josh is here to chew, uh, chew bubblegum and kick ass. So pubes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All out of bubblegum. Yeah, the shirt and says the what video, we're all about. It's like thousands of likes and three dislikes. I'm sure pubes is one of them. Yeah, so. whatever, whatever. And here's one last thing on that comment. If you're making a comment like that, it's like you're just lazy. It's like go to, like Josh has sections of like books, riffs, uh, podcast stuff. He could just go to where the books are and yeah. select one of the, you know, many many books that Josh has narrated and watch them. It's not like it's it's just him trying to be a dick. It's like yeah, or he's just lazy. There, there was no need for it. It's not. Yeah. He didn't have to say that. He could have just went about his business. It's just somebody wanting to get a rise, you know. So well, hey, pubes. Thanks for the view. Thanks for the comment. Help the algorithm. We appreciate yeah. it. And uh, let's end this segment with the last nice comment. Let's finish the sandwich. Let's do it. All right. This is a great one. Best 90 minutes on YouTube this week. And that is by BSK. And that's on episode number nine of Slash Tracks News. Wow. Big fucking king. That's so best BSK, 90 right? <laughs> minutes on YouTube this week. All of YouTube, every show, every everything. There's Angela White, super famous porn star, really gorgeous, running up and down the beach, probably in some videos. We're better than that. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy likes slash tracks news better than anything. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, BSK. And if you were defending us against the bad comment about the that one guy, I'm not gonna you know, I had such similar comment. Thank yeah. you for that too. Yeah. Glad you're uh, here. Josh, let's uh let's get into some fun facts. Let's we're done with the opening business. Let's get into some fun facts. Let's do it. All right, hey, Josh, your anus is just as unique as your fingerprints. 
I think I've heard that before. I think we've discussed that before. Or was it our ear that we discussed? I can't remember. There's well, I think it was uh, the person's lips oh, because okay. yeah. he was a bank robber, and when he was a when he was he robbed the bank and he was trying to escape and he face planted on the glass door, and they just put tape on the window, uh, the the glass, and lifted his lip prints, and they eventually caught him because of his lips. So. No, your anus is just as unique as your fingerprints, and your lips also are very unique. So if you are choosing to rob a bank or do anything nefarious, don't leave uh, asshole anus prints anywhere on the crime scene because they will dust it, they will lift it, and they will find you. Hey, it would streamline things, though, uh, if they started identifying people that way because then (laughs) instead of taking people through to do each finger, they get to the part of the jail where it's like, you know, uh, spread your cheeks, lift, and your, lift sack, your sack, cough. you know, you're spreading your cheeks already. You might as well slap some ink on there, get your, get you identified all in one thing. It would streamline, uh, inmates and, you know, it would probably, probably free up what, like 5,000 man hours a year. The people are being profiled by police officers based on what their ass looks like. I don't like the look of that guy's ass. That guy's trouble. It's armed and dangerous. They had yeah. A, you see that guy's anus? Salad from Taco Bell. <laughs> you see how that guy's anus was looking at me? That's trouble. That's big time trouble. I don't like it. Um. Hey, so check this out. What, what about people that burn their fingerprints off? <laughs> they'd be, well, they'd have to singe their asshole hair off first. They'd have to get through that layer of protection to get to their anus. You just <laughs> smell burning butthole hair first. Um. Be harder to frame somebody, too. Yeah, I didn't do it. Listen, he just pulls his butt cheeks apart. Check me out. I'm innocent. You're definitely the asshole that did this. <laughs> that guy was an asshole, and I am about to prove it. Uh, British spies used semen as invisible ink during World War I, a method that was invented by Captain Sir Mansfield Cumming. <laughs> okay, I can't add anything to that. Yeah. That's a fun um, fact. I cannot add anything to that. His name says it all. <laughs> yeah, Sir Cumming invented uh, semen as invisible ink. How did did they just did somebody? Um, okay, did they store the semen like in an ink well, uh, and they used quills, quill pens for this? Like, how did they do that? They had this is the old day. Because soldiers, you know, it, they probably had it everywhere. So, like, we got to do something with all this semen, you know? And Cumming was like... <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. We're out of ink. They have to do something. They have all these soldiers, so they have to figure out what to do with the soldiers' semen. That's your that's your thought process? Well, yeah. Because, I mean, they're all missing their wives and girlfriends and boyfriends and husbands <laughs> and everything back home. Yeah. You know, they're all rubbing one out every night. Okay. There's probably semen everywhere, and Cumming <laughs> was just trying to, you know, especially if it was the Navy, there's extra semen there. Uh, this is this is the part where... Semen the... is what I meant, and there's semen. Hey, if we had an actual look at the algorithm for views and when people stopped watching this video, <laughs> this fun fact is where people left. <laughs> um... In February of 2017, firefighters saved 18 piglets and two sows from a barn fire in Wiltshire, United Kingdom. Six months later, the farmer sent them sausage made from the piglets as a thank you gift. So he sent the firefighters a thank you basket uh, of sausages and other delectable pig parts uh, as a thank you for saving the same pigs that he sent the gifts that were he made them out of. What's that? This just in, 50% of our audience is now depressed. <laughs> the ones that stuck around after the semen. It's like, man, yeah. I felt like a hero after saving all those baby pigs, but now I just feel like a real jerk because I'm eating the same pigs. How does that? That's a horrible thought. That's you feel, <laughs> Yeah, you kind of probably felt like you wasted your time at that point. Right? Yeah. No, you could have done this a year ago when there wouldn't have been so much fat and stuff in the in the meat. It would have been more tender. God. He probably, well, they probably were like, okay, this is great because I'm saving money on my grocery bill, but at the same time, I, I wasted time 
<laughs> because I they ended up dying anyway, and I'm eating them. So it's like that's a conflicted situation. You'd be very conflicted after that breakfast. It's delicious, but at the same time, you feel bad, sort of. You know, you can't get time back. That's what they always say. You can lose a fortune, gain it all back. You lose time saving pigs and sows, and end up eating them later. You're never going to get that time back. So that's a bad deal. Uh, Josh, did you know that Jack Ryan, the man who designed the original Barbie doll, also developed missiles for the Pentagon? I did not know that. Well, now you do. That guy had a lot of time on his hand. Uh, it almost sounds like he might have been on the spectrum. Uh, he, not, not, not an insult, just saying that's a wide gap there. <laughs> um, he must have had, like, he's a beautiful mind. Uh, he absolutely, like... He liked two things. He liked to create toys that children love, and he also loved to create missiles that uh, destroy, <laughs> yeah, that destroy cities. <laughs> so he's got a wide, you know what, though? It's good to have many uh, talents and many hobbies because yeah. you'll never get bored. So that, yeah. you know what, Jack is doing the Lord's work right there. He's helping out the military, and he's helping out the children of the world. So... And hey, guess what? There's a new Barbie. There's a Barbie movie coming out right now. By the way, did you know that? No, I did not. Like another straight to DV. Like no, no, no. Here? no. Like an actual Barbie live action movie. Uh, Harley Quinn herself, Margot Robbie, is going to be Barbie, and Ryan Gosling is going to be Ken. And there's photos that have leaked of them like uh, rollerblading on the beach, uh, like in California, in their Barbie skating outfits. It's leaked. It's a real thing. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, I, I'm going to like take back all my negative comments about this movie I'm going to talk about later. Well, I'm going to send you the dig- <laughs> I'm going to send you the digital code for that when I buy it, too. So when I buy, when I buy Barbie on Blu-ray, I'll send you the digital code. I had Barbie on my Nintendo Entertainment System when I was a kid. Was that any good? It, Pretty fun. It was weird. It was like Mario. They were trying to make it like Mario, like where you like platform i don't yeah. know it was it was strange little mermaid was weird too i had a little sister so like all the girl games and there weren't that many uh, we had most of them on there i tried them out so. i had a first cousin that grew up in the same house as me uh and she was older than me but she had a nintendo with like all these really great cartridges and she kind of had girl type games but she had mickey mouse capades which was mickey and minnie and they're like on a pirate ship um, she had Adventure Island, which was kind of like a Mario knockoff, but it was like this guy running around in a loincloth, riding a skateboard, eating bananas. Um, they, so she had some of those types of games, but I grew up on those. And uh, some of those games are fun. I never thought of games as female or male when I was a kid. As long as they were fun, I'd play them. I, went, I got to pick out a game one night, and that like a lot of the ones I wanted were sold out at Walmart. And uh, this one, they were like in the cardboard box, a little hanger plastic thing on it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, it was like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego or Tiny Toon Adventures? So I bought Tiny Toon Adventures, and to this day, it is one of my favorite Nintendo games ever. It's a great platformer, it's obviously like a Mario clone, but there's so much more to it, and, uh, yeah, to this day I can sit down and play that game, and it's still one of my favorites. It's the first game I ever beat myself without the help of a sibling. Tiny so. Toons, when we were kids, um, was one of my favorite cartoons ever. It was like a must-watch after school. Um, I was really fond of, like, their Halloween specials. Do you remember when they do, like, Halloween specials? They did, like, summer school, like, summertime specials where it's, like, yeah. they were out of school and what they were doing for their summer That's vacation summer stuff. Summer vacation, yeah. Yeah, they had Still a... T- killer in the car with the... Yeah, yeah, they did. Family. <laughs> uh, pee-pee go down the hole, potty, potty go down the hole. Down the hole. Yeah, yeah. they had a... Oh, oh yeah. abusing animals. It was all whimsical. Whimsical. <laughs> just, you know, I want to hug you and squeeze you and tear your head off and all that stuff. And Dude, Tiny Toons, um, since we're talking about it real quick, they had uh, some of the best uh, McDonald's Happy Meal toys, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, so Tiny Toons was just elite. They, it, Tiny Toons was only on for three seasons. Uh, yeah, and then they syndication. Yeah, yeah. They went into three seasons, and then they immediately the guys, pretty much the entire people, the entire like behind the scenes cast and crew that did Tiny Toons did Animaniacs. Yeah, so they like rolled Animaniacs. right into Animaniacs. Yeah, I love yeah. the Good Feathers. I love Pinky and the Brain. Um, and back then they didn't treat kids like they're idiots. You know, like nowadays they treat kids like they're dumb. Back then they knew that we got some adult humor. You know. Mm-hmm. 
And Tiny Toons and Animaniacs is full of it. Um, full of that stuff. Yeah, uh, no, Tiny Toons was great. Animaniacs was great. Batman the Animated Series after school. I remember the whole lineup almost. It was like Fox, uh, KLS, well, KLSR was the station in Eugene, and I lived in Coos Bay on the coast, and that would like be beamed down to Coos Bay. So KL, Fox had Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, Batman the Anima- Animated Series. It was awesome. And I guarantee one of the things we're talking about, a little segue here, you can find it at 80stees.com, and you can grab that shirt, favorite design, promo code slash tracks 30, 30% off that sucker. All right, 30% off the shirts, but not 30% off the fun, okay? And uh, Josh, did you know that wearing socks during sex will actually increase your chances of having an orgasm? Did not know that. Is it because yeah. you're not so like worried about your feet and what your partner thinks? I don't know what I don't know how, but all I know is that when uh, Sir Mansfield Cumming was trying to get more Invisible Ink, all of those soldiers had socks on, and okay. he knew it. Yeah, he understood the correlation better than we do. So, what about people with foot fetishes? Wouldn't that like be the reverse of that? Well, they're probably... We have to do some studies. We have to do some studies. And yeah, come... the test of... Okay, you're going to produce uh, Invisible Ink with socks on or with socks off? And Josh is going to be here with his Crystal Clear Pepsi to monitor the situation closely. <laughs> uh, Josh, last fun fact uh... of this episode. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff to cover, so we got to get in and out of this real quick. Yeah. All right. When Steve, when Steve Jobs was on his deathbed... He actually requested five different oxygen masks so he could choose the one with the best design. Wow. You know what I would have done? I would have been like, oh, here's here's one for you. Oh, got to take it back. It's obsolete. You got to get the new one. He's requesting an update, <laughs> a mask update on his deathbed. No, man, that, that just, like, he was so, like, he was himself tell he was dead like he was constantly trying to like that's just how his mind worked man i when he was dying steve Jobs. so if you don't know who steve jobs is he's the one who's responsible for the iphone uh you know apple and all that stuff he um would wear the same clothes he'd wear a turtleneck like every day because he didn't want to waste his uh day deciding what to wear uh so he'd wear the same clothes every day um but yeah he was still trying to figure out the best possible mask to wear as he's like literally dying like he's going to be dead in a couple days and he's still trying to use that big beautiful mind of his him and sir mansfield coming would get along very well they think outside the box for sure it really would and and the guy that created the barbie and the missiles you know mm-hmm. was, jack ryan in the room brainstorming yeah yeah jack ryan hey uh what, josh what you come up with there Oh, my God. Uh, there's Josh's dad joke of the evening right there. That wasn't even, like, veiled. That was like, boom, here's a dad joke for you. <laughs> Bam. Emerald style right there. Hey, uh, Josh, let's get into uh, some sports. Sports. Yep. All right. Angels, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim pitcher, Reed Detmers, was just optioned down to the minor leagues, okay, which isn't a re- that big of a deal, so he didn't do that great of a job. Uh, but it is demoted. kind of an, in, he got demoted. Okay. Uh, he has a 4.66 ERA and 44 strikeouts in 58 innings pitch so far. The only reason this is kind of an interesting story is because Reed Detmers threw a no hitter six weeks ago for the angels. So he went from the heights of like, you can't do much better. You could throw, a, you could throw a perfect game. That'd be amazing. That'd be the best you could do. He threw a no hitter, which is the second best you could do. Is that the one we were talking about before? No, this is a totally oh. different guy. But he threw a no hitter. You're great, awesome. You're the king of the king of the town. Six weeks later, you're fired. Christopher Lloyd should have been there to help. And uh, things what do you mean differently with the almanac? Angels in the outfield. Oh, I think yeah. Well, you could have went, or he could have been with Chef Ramsay and Suburban <laughs> Commando and had the. Had the blueprints uh, to fight the Undertaker and the guy who was also in Angels in the Outfield. The big guy, that guy was in both of them. The, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The big guy who was yeah. a bounty hunter that wasn't Undertaker. He's also yeah. in Angels. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so check this out. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Steph Curry, uh, you know, just won the world championship with the Golden State Warriors. 
uh, probably you know going to be a Hall of Famer. He's won the world championship four times. Greatest three point shooter of all time. He played his college basketball at a small school called Davison. Uh, and if you don't follow college sports, you probably don't even know where or what Davison is. Okay. Well, Steph Curry tried to walk on to Duke as a freshman. He wasn't even offered a scholarship. That's how unimportant he was deemed by Division One schools. That's yeah. how he ended. That's how he ended up at Davidson. Anyway, he ended up playing at Davidson, played really well his freshman year, and the next year, Duke, which he tried to walk onto and they denied him, wanted to start recruiting him. So they're like, hey, you know, we know you wanted to walk on and we denied you. Now we want to actually like give you a scholarship your sophomore year. And Steph Curry uh, said to his dad, Del Curry, who was also an NBA player. So Del Curry retired uh, and he was a great three point shooter as well. He said, Dad, if they didn't want me then, I don't want them now. Fuck them. I'm, staying at, I, da- I'm yeah. staying at Davison. I don't so, know much about the situation or sports, but I agree with that mentality. Yeah. So he ended up going to staying at Davison, and he went to uh, the NCAA tournament with this tiny school later on and just played amazing, balled out of his mind and got noticed and was drafted really high in the NBA draft, and now he's a legend. So. Awesome. Yeah, he stayed true to himself and believed in himself and made amazing things happen. That's a great story. And in six weeks, he'll be right back playing college ball again. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> you can't get set down to the minors. With, I know, I know. <laughs> they're like, Steph, thanks for the four rings, but beat it, you bum. Go back to Davidson. Um, here's the last sports story of the episode. Two weeks ago, Shaquille O'Neal showed up to a New York restaurant. He ended up paying the tab of every person at the restaurant in the uh, in New York. The total bill was well over twenty five thousand dollars. He even bought dinner for the entire staff at that restaurant and all the servers. And uh, also, he gave the biggest tip to each server that they'd ever had in their entire lives of waiting tables. So he bought everyone in the restaurant their meals, everyone that worked there a meal from the menu, tipped all the servers the biggest tip they'd ever had. What are your thoughts on that? Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, and in other news, Slash Tracks Action News would like to reiterate that professional athletes have way too much fucking money. Hey, stop. Fuck you, Alex. Oh, you're a jerk. You know what? That's a good story. Shaq is doing nice things for people, and you got to spin it like that. He's got way too much money, but that... He knows he, but he, knows he has too much money. He's doing good things. Okay, it, it, he bought everybody food. You know, if he if he wants to do a really good thing, just give everybody his money and just disperse it hey, across the country. That's hey, funny. Like 350 million people, right? Yeah. You know, one of these multi millionaires really want to do something good for the country. Give everybody a million bucks. If they're if if they're a billionaire or close Every, to it, then you want up. everybody. You're telling me that everybody in the world with access to a million dollars, that would not be good, Josh. Everybody in the country. Okay, let's just say the country then, because I work at a restaurant four days a week, and I wait on some very interesting people. These people do not need access to a million dollars, okay, because they're not going to be a better person with a million dollars. They're probably going to be dead in a week if they had a million dollars. It's not going to help. What? Bad thing? No, I'm, I'm not advocating the death oh, of anybody, okay, Josh. Okay, okay. Uh, well, let me tell you one other thing about Shaq before we go into wrestling. Uh, Shaq has been known to just show up to Walmarts or, like, Targets, and, like, he'll just – he'll look at somebody, and he'll they'll have a cart full of stuff. And if, usually if it's a mom with a kid, he'll just buy everything for their – like, what they want. Like, he'll just be like, go fill your cart up. I'm going to get whatever you need, whatever you want, um, and he'll pay for it. So Shaq's been known. He's bought people engagement rings. He's bought people laptops that needed it for school. He'll just show up to, to stores and do this sort of thing. Oh, Shaq's wow. a legend, dude. One day I was in a Walmart and I had a full cart of groceries, some toys for the kids. Yeah. And like, uh, I think I had like, even had like a video game or something in there. It was like 170 bucks worth of shit. And I realized I left my wallet in the car and my, I was holding. My daughter, Alexis, who was a baby at the time, holding my son's hand, who was a toddler at the time. And I was like, I know there's a line. If you just give me like two minutes, I'll run out to the car real quick, get my wallet, be right back. 
And as I'm walking away, this guy behind me, who is not Shaquille O'Neal, uh, says, don't worry about it. And like he had stuck his card in and paid for every penny of it and would not take the money back from me. And uh, so, yeah, that guy is pretty cool in my book, too. Did you know who the guy was? Did you ever see him again? Never again in my life. Never met him before. He didn't look like a millionaire. I can tell you that. So, did, but, uh, that's a true story. True story. Did you have your short hair or your long hair when this happened? I had my short hair. Short hair. <laughs> okay, because if you had your long hair, you, you're looking pretty good. He might have hit, been hitting on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like, how could I get this guy's attention? Hey, look at this guy's mane. I need, I, I don't, let's buy his groceries to, and video games. Let's buy Tiny Toons on any, NES form and let's see how this ends up. <laughs> Did you, ever play that? Did you ever play that game? If not, you should get an emulator and try it out. I have Tiny Toons on NES on an emulator. I have the Nintendo console. The You know when they came out with the Nintendo Minis, like a couple years ago? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got one of those and hacked it. So I have every Nintendo game ever made on that on that thing. So, yeah, I'll, I can check it out tonight. I have it right next to my bed. I play, I play Tetris and Pac-Man, like, every night. Furball and Plucky are the best teammates to pick when you have to pick them. Okay. Furball for uh, the first world, Plucky for the second world, and then Furball for the rest. Uh, Wait a minute. Mine. Is this like Super Mario Brothers 2 almost? You can pick which players that are good for levels? You're, bu- you're, you're uh, Buster Bunny, but like there's a power-up that can turn you into the, your partner that you pick before the level. And like, well, you, furball, furball you can turn into Taz, climb, I remember that. Yeah, Furball can climb walls, Taz can like, uh, Dizzy Devil can spin like Dizzy in a tornado, Devils. Plucky can fly a little bit, yeah. I remember that now that you're saying that. I do remember that a little bit. That's crazy. Um, so, you know, it's been about two weeks since we've released episode nine of the podcast, and a lot has happened, especially yeah. in the wrestling world. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're about to get into probably the media section of the episode. So, Josh, let's get into the wrestling section for the night. Pro wrestling. Here we go. All right. First story, and this broke like 10 days ago, so we apologize. It's not that super fresh, but we have to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vince McMahon has temporarily stepped down as WWE chairman and CEO. His daughter, Stephanie, has assumed the role. Vince is currently being investigated for sleeping with his paralegal and the company's paralegal. Uh, so apparently Vince was had a paralegal for WWE that he you know was in the Titan Towers, and he was sleeping with her. Uh, he hasn't he hasn't denied that, and her salary the first year she worked for WWE was a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, the second year she worked there, which was her last year, went up to two hundred thousand dollars a year, and she was given a secret payment, which has been described as hush money, uh, to keep her quiet because she was sleeping with Vince, of three million dollars. Uh, the three million dollars was Vince McMahon's own personal money. Now, the problem, Josh, is that Vince had doubled her salary uh, to $200,000 the second year of working for WWE, which is highly unusual. So they're investigating if he used uh, publicly traded companies' money as hush money, which if he did, that's that's grounds for termination. You, You can be removed as the head of the company for doing something like that. Because you can't use the company's money for your own personal stuff. Um, Actually, the mistake he made was not having somebody that he's currently extorting pay the hush money for him. Okay? That's the problem. Um, It's crazy that Vince is gone, man. Um, Even even if it's temporarily. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's nuts. If I was Stephanie... I would do everything I could right now during this period, regardless of what he's saying, to fix WWE because it is still I can't I can't watch it. I've tried. The belts are the ugliest they've ever been. The female talent is what is the best thing on the show. And not because of like the looks, but because not even not even any matters. not even anymore though, because Natasha and Sasha Banks are both walked off. They gave the tag belts back to Johnny Ace, who, by the way, Johnny Ace, who is Animal from Legion of Doom's brother, uh, Johnny Ace was also caught up in that scandal. Apparently, Vince passed the paralegal off to Johnny Ace, who was the head of talent relations, 
and he's been removed of his position. I'm serious. That, that's part of the story. I taught so, him well. I taught him well. Okay. That's yeah. all I can say. That's all I can say. I taught him well. Um, they are good friends. They are good friends. So he might have well, called him for, for some hints, for some tips. You know what's crazy <laughs> about th- this whole thing, Josh, is that Stephanie had stepped aside from her previous role with the company like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. So like a week before she assumed control of the entire company as the interim CEO, she was relieved of her duties uh, as like global talent marketing or whatever. She was like trying to sell the company basically to other, you know, whatever. They said she wasn't doing a good enough job and they basically buried her leaving. Then this story breaks with Vince. Now she's the entire boss. Also, Triple H, who's Stephanie's husband, has now uh, been quoted as saying, I'm back to talent. So apparently Triple H is like in charge of NXT again, and he's like assuming a bigger role with the company, which is phenomenal because Triple H is a great wrestling mind and a very good person with the talent. Uh, Even though Triple H has a reputation as being a dick behind the scenes when he was a wrestler, as an actual businessman, who uh, makes the best decisions for the product and for the company, Triple H is a legit straight shooter. It, so totally he, night the, and day. The reason he was a dick is because he didn't drink or do drugs, uh, for one. That's why he got that reputation, probably. Ultimate Warrior had the same reputation because he wasn't one of the boys. He wasn't yeah. going out and partying and swapping women uh, with you know with each other or whatever. I'm, I sure, don't know. I'm sure Paul was like, damn it, couldn't Vince Diddle was lawyer before I had a heart attack? You know? Uh Maybe if he had been better, like if Triple H was in better health, you know, he would have been the one to assume control or something. I don't know. Um, I'm surprised Shane's not involved in all this somehow. Shane, Shane we already talked about Shane. Shane yeah, was fired. Got fired. Shane yeah, was no. fired, like, two months ago because he was trying to have, like, Shane was trying to have too much of a thumbprint on the Royal Rumble. Like, Shane was in the final four of the Royal Rumble, and we hadn't seen Shane since WrestleMania the previous year. I think Shane's an amazing wrestler, and if he had, had been given a real chance with and wasn't a McMahon, you know, I think he would have done good. He's done some crazy shit. Uh, he's got talent, so he he does. He's but Shane is like fifty something now, and he he looks fifty something now. He, he got, and he, he really wanted to be a wrestler back in the day, but he couldn't. He was the promoter's son, and I tell you, on the indie circuit, they don't give a shit. Like eighty percent of indie circuits, your world champion is going to be the son or the promoter, the son of the promoter or the promoter. Yeah, and you can't do that. Vince couldn't do that with WWF and WWE. But I think Shane had talent. He he would have made a, a great wrestler. Um, uh, on the la- the last little piece of that story though about Vince, um, I agree with you that it's absolutely crazy that this is this is how Vince has stepped down from the company because I thought Vince wouldn't step down until he was dead. First of all. And then the other thing is now there's allegations popping up because now that he's in hot water, um, there's a story from the late eighties. That's that her name. Hot water. Uh, it's not hot water, but it's, there's oh. a story. There's a story from the late eighties, early nineties. That's, that's popped back up. Um, apparently there was a female referee that Vince allegedly um, raped in a limousine. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, so allegedly this happened. She's claiming this happened. Um, yeah, so that story has recently resurfaced. So they're kind of piling on Vince now. And I don't really know how Vince is going to, I don't, I don't really see how he can just reassume. He's going to bounce back. He's going to bounce back from all this about the same way he took the stunner from Stone Cold. The last time. Yeah, just terribly. uh, The worst stunner of all time. Yeah. It's it's not good. Um, Ryback, f- former WWE superstar Ryback. Uh, the second story is actually a piggyback of the Vince story. Ryback promises that he's going to personally defecate on Vince McMahon's grave. Cool. I Take bet it for- Nails will do it with him. Or is Nails, Nails dead? Nails is dead, first of okay. all. <laughs> Nails... Nails' ghost shows up to choke out Vince McMahon's corpse. Is that where you're going? Yeah, yeah. At WrestleMania 40, the ghost of Nails versus Vince McMahon's corpse. Get it on pay-per-view. Ah. Here's what I don't like about Triple H, man. He, he, well, he since buried, we were talking about him. <laughs> he buried Sting. Okay. Okay. I was there, by the way. I was at that WrestleMania live. That was, that was horrible. 
it would have been funnier if X Pac like came out from one side and halfway through like took off like the NWO shirt and ran over to the DX side. Uh, that would have been funnier. Uh, no, I just that's the only thing I like about Triple H, um, the way Sting was handled and shit. Well, Triple H, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, Ghost Match. I was just thinking it'd be cool to see Sting and Taker, and we're never going to get that now. Um, Triple H always had a history of putting himself over in situations where he didn't have to put himself over. Like when he was wrestling CM Punk uh, before CM Punk left the WWE, there were situations where it's like, why is Triple H going over and then just leaving back to his office position? Like, because you're burying the most popular wrestler at the time, putting yourself over, and then just going back into retirement. Well, how does that benefit the company? You'd want to put CM Punk over, because then you can sell more seats, because he's actually going to be there and wrestle the next night. It doesn't. That made no sense. And they were trying to stuff, like, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns down our throats for so long that people like Bray Wyatt and uh, Kurt Henning's son, who, had a ma- who has amazing Curtis, talent. Curtis Axel. They just get buried in stupid shit, and you know, and they're like, "No, we we're invested in Roman and Seth. Roman is the cousin of the Rock, goddammit. it, you know." And nobody cares. Nobody cares. They they're they're putting Triple H over when he isn't even fucking wrestling full time. They're putting <laughs> they're, they're shoving wrestlers down our throats we don't care about. Seth Rollins isn't he the one that fucking injured Cody? No, he he wrestled Cody after the fact. Oh, but no, Cody Cody hurt his hurt his uh, pec lifting weights. He didn't. Okay. He didn't hurt it in the ring. Um, well, Seth has hurt a lot of people. He That's hurts. A- he hurt Sting obviously with the buckle buster. Um, I was gonna say really quick though, um, Seth Rollins at one point was extremely over. The problem with Seth Rollins is they didn't quite know what to do with him. They'd switch him heel or babyface on the drop of a hat like they did with Big Show. And they never really had, like, a gimmick for him. It was always Seth frickin' Rollins or, like, they never... It was never, like... I don't even know what I'm trying to say. He he Bring never... Characters back. It yeah, he didn't have, back. like... It was just Seth Rollins. He was, like, in black, ti- black ring attire. There was nothing that grabbed me about it. It's like, Bring yeah, he's a great it. wrestler. Bray Wyatt, even before The Fiend, was a character. Exactly. He was yeah. using his name, but he was a character. Mm-hmm. It's like they just started using everybody's names. And they're like, oh, we don't want to be the cartoony 90s WWF. Oh, you don't, that isn't what a character is. We don't mean put a fucking mailman out there. You know, or garbage but, man. Bray Wyatt was a character. Yeah, gar- I was trying to do one they didn't do. Did they have a mailman? They, oh, I don't speaking, know. Of, speaking of garbage men and shit, a mailman. I will never pr- refer to Kane. Again, as Kane, he, from this point forward, he's Dr. Isaac Yankum. Uh, you know, right after a really serious thing happened, he said some really effed up stuff. Not going to say it on our show, but if you're interested, Google it. Uh, a lot of wrestlers, Mankind, X-Pop, were like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, Paige, I saw all that stuff. He, he's <laughs> like, yeah. Um, Yankum, that's it. Or Fake Diesel, I'll go even lower. Hey, you. Uh, let's get into the third story real quick. You, so you had talked about Cody Rhodes earlier. So Cody Rhodes is out uh, indefinitely uh, for at least nine months. But they're kind of thinking they're they're thinking that possibly he could make a Royal Rumble return. So that would actually be a little bit earlier than the nine months yeah. that we're being told, which would be awesome if Cody Rhodes showed up. Because at the time, he was probably the most popular baby face. Um, in the company, and it was a great story. I'm a, and you and I both agreed that it was cool that he was able to come back on his own terms, uh, and he was having major success. But uh, part of that success was uh, Dave Meltzer, the guy who does the Wrestling Observer, the newsletter that he's been he's been doing it for like forever. Uh-huh. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins at Hell in a Cell, the match that Cody did before he was on the shelf. So he wrestled that match with a torn pec, you know. There's pictures all over the place. We talked about it on a previous episode. That match was given five stars by Dave Meltzer, and that was the first WWE main roster match that Dave had given five stars since Cena versus Punk at Money in the Bank in 2011. So, yeah, that was a five-star match. Uh, So Cody went out injured with a five-star match and performed injured. That's a legendary performance, Josh. Oh, yeah. I've loved Cody Rhodes ever since before he was wrestling for WWE. Uh, they were inducting Dusty Rhodes into the Hall of Fame or something, or something was going on. 
and he's standing up there with, with his dad, and right in the middle of it, he takes the mic away and says, and my brother Dustin deserves to be up here too, you know? Like, he was sitting there saying, Dustin needs to be in the Hall of Fame, da 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 And I was like, who is this guy? You know, who's his younger brother? But I had so much respect for him. And then he pops up on the roster a couple years later, and I've been yeah. a fan of Cody's ever since. Um, but, yeah, he's got a lot of spirit, and uh, he's just a really good guy, it seems like. Yeah, he. I, I like Cody Rhodes big time. It, it, the older I get, the harder it is for me to – get behind characters. I don't, I think cause I'm not, I don't know if it's cause I'm an adult now. I'm not a, I'm not as easily amused, but Cody Rhodes, I became a fan of Cody Rhodes. So he was my guy. I can't wait to see him come back and do big things. I wish Ted DiBiase Jr. hadn't left. He had, he had a lot of talent going for him. Yeah. Well, he's got a lot of other things going for him right now. Like fraud, uh, fraud. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard about that? Him and his father, uh, misappropriating, misusing funds that they were given for their ministry. They were using the ministry funds for their own personal stuff. Say it isn't so that that somebody used religion to make money. Yeah. It isn't so. Yeah. Ted and Ted Jr. aren't doing so well right now. This just Um, This was the obvious news section. All right. Um, Last uh, wrestling little snippet of the night. It has been 15 years since the world has lost uh, sensational Queen Sherry. Do you have any thoughts on uh, Queen Sherry or Sherry Martell? Uh, yeah, and a story. A quick one. Uh, I thought she was one of the greatest uh, female wrestlers of all time. Me too. I really do. Uh, a lot of people don't know how much she actually wrestled. Uh, one of the greatest valets. She really got her heels over when they couldn't, and, weren't good on the microphone. Hands down, one of the best. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, I booked Jim Neidhart on a show I was running in 2010, and he brought this woman with him who claimed to be Sensational Sherry's sister. <laughs> um, she was just she's, she was just somebody, I think she was somebody selling. Anyways, I'm not going to get into the stories. I don't want to run down a legend. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't want to make a legend look bad, somebody who I have a lot of respect for, Jim Neidhart. Um, but this lady, whoever she was, she was not Sensational Sherry's sister. And she wanted me to pay her like $1,000 for coming with him. And I paid Jim. And I did it up front. And he shook my hand and said uh, he appreciated that. Most promoters don't pay till the end of the show. And he thought it was very professional that I did it beforehand. And for like months she was threatening to sue me and stuff. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not paying some random rando person a uh, thousand bucks, especially when they're crapping on the legacy of such a great worker. Yeah. I don't like sensational Sherry. I was like, you're not her sister. I, I looked it up. I know I've done my research. You're like, there's uh, a thing called Google uh, nowadays. <laughs> I was able to look up a photo of her. I don't know if you're aware of the internet, but you're not her. I'll tell you this about Jim Knight. I was so proud of his daughter. Um, I actually tweeted to Natty one time uh, uh, and told her a story from whenever he was on that show. A uh, funny story about somebody walking into his hotel room thinking it was theirs. And uh, she actually retweeted that. And that was pretty cool. Very and cool. I wanted to, I let her know that uh, all he talked about the whole time he was there was how proud he was of her. So Natty, but, uh, of the heart kids the hart grandkids everybody thought teddy was going to be the guy teddy hart uh he ended up not being the guy i mean he's a great wrestler but teddy has a lot of personal issues um a lot of people thought it was going to be harry harry the british bulldog son has had a great career everywhere yeah. basically but the wwe he's for some reason whatever he was in the wwe it was really short-lived the one that truly stood out and made a huge name and career for themselves was natty Natty's the watched, technician. I watched Total Divas just for her. Yeah, Natty was Natty is the goat of the heart grandchildren. It, it's it's facts. Uh, she's a great technician. She's getting better on the mic. She's got a huge uh, feud right now with Ronda Rousey. She's doing big things. So good for her. I love that uh, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper wanted the Rowdy name and the jacket. His jacket passed down to Ronda Rousey. That's a really cool story. We should talk about sometime. 
dude, that's a match you need to watch. You like the girls, you like R- Ronda Rowdy, or Rowdy Ronda, and you like Natty. So you, that's oh, yeah. a match you definitely need to watch. Oh, yeah. I want to see that. Um, my closing thoughts on Queen Sherry. Uh, I was going to say, she was with all the top guys, so which says a lot about her. She was with Shawn Michaels. She was with Macho Man. She was with Ted DiBiase. Uh, when she was in WCW, she was with Flair. She was with Harlem Heat. Um, whenever, let's put it this way, whenever a company put her with a wrestler or a tag team, she elevated the team and the wrestler and elevated herself and made everything that much bigger and more of a spectacle. And I, listen, she was a heel her entire career, except for when Sean turned on her, basically, and Marty Jannetty showed up to save her. But she, uh, she wasn't a heel in real life. She was a babyface. Everybody loved her. She did amazing work, and she's missed. Here's to Queen Sherry. Yeah, we love Queen Sherry. So 15 years without a legend, so we miss you. Wrestling world misses her, too. Um, let's get into the horror and spooky news section of the show. Before we move on to the next section, the horror and spooky section, be sure to check out the horror and spooky shirts at 80stees.com. And Alex, what's the promo code they can use to get 30% off? Slash tracks 30. Be sure to type that promo code in. 30% off. It's a great discount for some great products. So what do we got? All right. We're going to get into the first uh, horror and spooky story of the night. Josh, you're going to love this one. Okay. Sony, Sony has officially given the release date for Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel. Sweet. It's- Going to get a 2023 release date. Right there. Yeah. He's not afraid of no tattoo. Now, what date was it again? I was showing off my tattoo. It doesn't have a specific date, but it will be released in 2023. Oh, yeah. Same time. And they're going to do Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild Part 2 that year, too. Man, yeah. that's going to that's gonna be a good year for you. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's just jump into this real quick, because everybody knows, and they've been asking in the comments about this, they wanted your Scream 5 review, so... New rumor swirling the internet. Nev Campbell has secretly signed on to return as Sidney Prescott in Scream 6. So it's not, a, it's not confirmed, it's not official, but everybody's saying that she secretly met with the people and she signed a contract to show up. So it's almost like a WWE WrestleMania surprise appearance or something. What's that? In a past episode, Josh said she'll either show up secretly as a killer or they'll secretly sign her. And she'll pop up in the movie? Really? Oh, sorry. You just had an opportunity for you to pat yourself on the back. I I appreciate it. Just went into business for yourself right there. But, (laughs) you know, you got to do it sometimes. Josh, what are your thoughts on Scream 5 after I so generously gave you the digital uh, copy? I watched about one or two minutes of it and got bored, like you did with Walking Dead. I watched the first half of the episode. I was like, hey. Tell you what, I, I watched this whole movie, okay, and I gave it a fair shot. So at some point, I'm asking you to – season one of Walking Dead is six episodes, okay? Okay. I got bored in the first episode. Me too. And I was done. But a year later, I, I gave season one a shot, and I finished season one, went to the first episode of season two, and I was hooked since. I ask that you do the same thing at some point when you have the time. Okay. Uh, since I did this for Scream. It's only six episodes. Give it a shot sometime. We'll talk about it later on. Maybe this uh, winter or something. I don't know. Okay. Um, my thoughts on Scream. I got to go through these fast. I got a lot. Okay. I thought the cast was kind of eh, you know. Uh, I like the red right hand, but that was in Scream, not Stab, but still a cool little throwback. Dewey's intro was sad sack as hell. Like they couldn't have made it any sadder. You know, it's like kill this guy already. You put him out of his misery. Um, guys do not shower that long. Spoilers, everybody. There are some spoilers here. Uh, guys do not shower as long as this dude showers in the movie, and his mom is the sheriff, and she's supposed to, like, rush back home to save him or whatever. But still, what happens when she gets there was pretty cool. Um, requels ignore sequels. This tried to be the exception to that rule. Sorry. Um... I didn't like the fact that there were two neck kills in a row, uh, that Gail hasn't grown any, 
The hospital scene was intense. Big spoiler right here, if you haven't seen the ending of the movie, that hospital scene I'm talking about, I knew exactly in that moment that Richie was one of the killers, Alex. Me, because, uh, me too. When, he, when Dewey goes back to finish off Ghostface, you can tell Rich, Richie, Richie was like, yeah, where and are then, you going? And then Richie, Richie's the one that makes the phone call. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> also, the killer didn't kill Richie. Just knocked him down. So that kind of did that for me. Um, Dewey should have uh, shot in the head. Like, he shouldn't have got that close. Dewey, the, our Dewey, would have just picked up his gun, shot, the, shot him in the head. He wouldn't have waited for his phone to even ring. Dewey's death was bullshit too soon. And now, now Gail all of a sudden cares. Now she, you know, I have no sympathy for her. I did not feel sorry. The actual stab, getting to see actual scenes from stab was pretty cool. Randy, behind you, that scene where, like, the chick's on the couch and it happens to her, and they say her name, you know, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Sydney and now, Sydney, Sydney and Gil, not uh, doing it for, were not doing it for me. Dewey was my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Sydney was misused in my opinion, but I'm glad she appeared though. So was Rich Gail. Yeah, I said Richie was a little too obvious. Uh, too many clues were th uh, throughout the movie to pick out who the killers were. I wish Sydney had died. <laughs> Sorry, and Richie was right. We would have won. The audience would have won because it would have been huge. You know, it's it's crazy. That's ridiculous. She surprised. She's su survived so many times. Um. It was cheesy, the whole, here, take the torch then, and she somehow catches on fire. I actually like that. See, and, I know, but like she said, before she even knew the stove was going to come on, she said, here, have the torch, you know? Well, she um, said, no, she didn't. She Once she was on fire, she said, enjoy that torch. Yeah, she did say that. But before that, the chick said, it's time to pass the torch. And Gail said, here, you can have it. And then the stove got turned on. And then Sydney said, enjoy that torch, or Gail did. Okay. Um, it was cool to see Billy in a few, you know, Ski Ulrich in it a little bit. Um, but also but stupid it, because it he's an apparition of her, his daughter's schizophrenia. Yeah, that was ridiculous. That's, that's what I was getting, yeah. And, yeah. That, and the chick that got shot and burned would would, would have been so dead. Yeah, she's dead. Her, yeah. Um, the skeet thing didn't make any sense, yeah. And, you know, the whole, it was cool seeing when she said, um, it was cheesy it, the, when she stabbed the dude a bunch it was cool but then it was cheesy when she said you don't fuck with the uh, daughter of a serial killer he's yeah. like what about my ending here, here it comes Yeah, you know? he's, he, he, by the way she stabbed him like OJ stabbed his uh, ex-wife like a hundred times just ravagedly yeah. savagely she, he's not going to be able to ask about the ending he's, he's dead. dead he's dead Okay. And then at the end, it says four Wes. And in my opinion, you know, at the end of Ghostbusters Afterlife, when it says for Harold, in my opinion, putting four Wes at the end of this movie is like putting four Harold at the end of Ghostbusters 2016. Um, this movie did not need to be made. It's good for a popcorn flick, but it was pointless. They killed Dewey for shock value only. I think Gail should have been the one to get killed because she's the only character who has not grown in any of the movies. It seems like she's going to, but when the next sequel comes out, it's old Gail again. Uh, I had no sympathy for her when Dewey died. Um, I think they should. I think they, they they killed the wrong character. I think it was too obvious who the killer was. I give the movie like a four out of ten. I didn't hate it as bad as I thought I would. Thank okay. you for the code. It was fun. It was a You're fun welcome. fun slasher flick. I wish I could have liked it more. I wish I could have given you a better review. But that was my rundown. I hope that it wasn't too harsh. There were some cool things about it. I love the throwback stuff. Oh, one last thing. Who the hell has a landline anymore? All right, back to you. Nobody uh, has a landline anymore. <laughs> they give you phone companies literally, like when you sign up for the Internet in my area of the country, they'll be like, okay, you're going to get HBO, you're going to get Cinemax, you're going to get internet, this speed, blah, 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 and we're going to throw in a landline. Now, like, for nothing, for free. They <laughs> give you landlines. Yeah. You don't pay for landlines. And most of the time, people are like, eh, no thanks, I'm good. Uh, I don't I, need a landline. I've never been texting someone. Hold on, the landline's ringing. That was the only way they could fit in. I know. 
Yeah, it was stupid. Uh, hopefully in Scream 6, which they're rushing into production and probably wrote the the script on a cocktail napkin at the local Ramada bar. Uh, so hopefully they don't squeeze in a landline again. Cause I'm, let's tie it up. Let's tie yeah. it up. This. We, we, let's tie it up with, with part six. You know what I mean? It's, it's time. Uh, well, they don't listen. Scream six is being rushed. They just killed Dewey. Nev Campbell didn't even sign cause they weren't going to pay her enough. And they barely squeezed her character into five. It, it really made no sense why she was even in the film. Gail didn't need to be in the film. The only one that needed to be in the film was Dewey because he still lived in the area. And he um, should have made it to the end. They he, shoot going to die. He should have died at the end. They and shoot skinny, horn- a skinny little bitch would not have been able to do what she did to him. They squeezed. They shoehorned Gail and Sydney in just to be able to say they were in the movies. It made no sense. Um, Vince Russo must have written the script. Uh, <laughs> let's get into the next story of uh, horror and spooky news. Okay. Okay. So, Tim Curry, a lifelong Scooby-Doo fan, was offered the role of the villain in the hit 2002 Scooby-Doo movie. He declined when he learned the film would feature Scrappy-Doo, a character that he hated. Yeah, I knew there's a reason I love Tim Curry. Other than he looks great in stock, you know, stockings and hills, and uh, was great in Clue. Um, yeah, there's another reason to to love him. Uh, we it, it worked out. I liked that it was Scrappy because I hated Scrappy so much as a kid. So. Yeah, he's, Scrappy's just a whiny bitch in part <laughs> in uh, the Not movie. Even a puppy. Not even yeah. a puppy. No, he's just a pain he, in the ass. A problem. <laughs> um, let's get into uh, the last. We're going to get into the last horror story of the episode. And this is a big one. This is actually a big one. Okay. All right. Bloomhouse Productions CEO is looking to purchase the rights of Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. So Jason Bloom is confident that he can get Robert England to reprise his role as Freddy Krueger one last time. Hell he, yes. He says, I could make him come back. I can get anyone back. I mean, Ellen Burstyn was 87, and I got her to come back for The Exorcist. I'm going to make this happen. Sweet. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, do it now. Do it soon. We're losing too many people too fast. I mean, do it. Do it. Do Robert, it. Robert like England. Gus, and it. Dude. Gus and Breaking Bad, do it. Robert England is having a major career renaissance right now with Stranger Things, because Stranger Things is like, making songs from the 80s, number one hits in 2022. Cool. Robert England is Victor Crawley. Uh, there's just a bunch of like amazing things happening, and the 80s are back. The 90s are back. 80stees.com never went anywhere. They've always been here, baby. Crimson Guard, okay? 80s Tees is here to stay. Get yourself a 30% off when uh, with our code. Slash, slash what is tracks it? 30. Yeah, slash tracks 30. But anyway, now's the time to do it, okay? So let's make it happen. Let's get Friday the 13th back. Let's get Nightmare on Elm Street, another film, with Robert England back. Let's make it happen. And Josh, Echo Cooler and yeah. Crystal Pepsi. Yeah, make both those things happen. And let's get into headlines to end let's the show. Headlines. All right. Top Gun Maverick has recently passed $1 billion worldwide at the box office. What are your thoughts, Josh? You haven't seen it, so what? I know you don't really like Tom Cruise. What are your thoughts? Um, congratulations, that guy is a money making machine. Apparently, is he is he like in the whole thing, or is he like yes, a legacy character? No, he's no. Val Kilmer's a legacy character. Oh, um, I forgot to do my Skeet Ulrich thing. We were talking about Skeet Ulrich while okay. I was going like, to give my review. Kind of like you blew it. I kind of like the movie. I'll talk about Top Gun then, you know, and Tom Cruise as Skeet Ulrich. <laughs> you know. Like Tom Cruise, I saw Top Gun Maverick uh, over the weekend, and I don't like Tom Cruise. I've told, I've openly spoke about how I think he's a weirdo. Um, I went into Top Gun Maverick with zero expectations. I just wanted to go see a movie. And <laughs> it's 97% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. So, what, you, fans you, or critics? Both. 97% fresh. Okay, that's ridiculously high. Um, so I went in, but I went into it with zero expectations cause I don't like Tom Cruise. I had a, I had the time of my life. It's action packed. It's funny. I cared about the characters. I cared about what happened to them. Um, it's a really, really good movie and I couldn't recommend it anymore. It's a, it's a great popcorn movie. Take, Alex take someone. Need. 
I need for speed. There you go. Talk to me, Goose. Uh, let me go see the sequel. It's good, man. If we were in Top Gun, you're my goose. You're my, you're my, yeah, you're my goose, buddy. Oh, thank you. Um, second, <laughs> second headline of the night. Post Malone reveals he's written about sixty percent of all of his lyrics while on the toilet. So I can, I can believe that. Oh, That's get it. out of here, Post Malone. I don't even like new rap. Post Malone is good. I don't. I, I'm saying in the shower and the toilet uh, is where a lot of people do a lot of introspective things. You know. Yeah. You're all alone. You're in your own head. I can see that. I believe it. You can only read the shampoo bottle so many times, or the <laughs> Listerine bottle, before you start writing Grammy award winning records. I totally yes. relate to you on that. Yeah. Um, Post Malone. Um, I do my narrations. Is on the toilet. You do a lot of yeah. That's why there's such an echo in some of them. I'm I guess. on the toilet right now. Freddy so. Krueger's Tales of Terror, brought to you by the '80s slasher librarians Oops. commode. No, that's just a cool story. Uh, I I would never have graduated high school if it wasn't for the bathtub. I I did a lot of my reading. Like if we had book reports and stuff, I'd read in the tub. Uh, did a lot of reading in the bathtub. So yeah, I'd have and I'd even my mom would even <laughs> bring me snacks and stuff while I was in the tub. <laughs> She's like. Uh, are you done with your book report in there? Are you all washed up? And I'm like, I'm not even wrinkled up enough yet. Look. And Alex is like, and also, I'm 22. I don't do those <laughs> anymore, Mom, but thank you. Yeah, I'm hungover. I feel like crap. I'm just relaxing. I've got my G.I. Joes in there, Deep Six and everything. <laughs> um, okay, let's get into headline number three. You ready, Josh? Yes, and I've got all a right. surprise for you at the end. But keep all going. right, so... Two. We like to talk about VHS tapes and their prices on this show. Just, it's just interesting. Um, a rare Back to the Future VHS recently sold at auction for $75,000 in Texas. It was a sealed copy, a sealed original, still shrink-wrapped, still shrink-wrapped copy, and it included the white MCA home video watermark, which is, a, which is rare. So okay. it's, it's still shrink-wrapped. It's got the very rare logo, the watermark. And the original owner of this tape was actually Tom Wilson himself, who played Biff Tannen. Wow. And when you bought the VHS uh, at auction for $75,000, you got a personal signed note from him and a photo of him holding the VHS. Um, That's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool. And also, what's even cooler is uh, Tom Wilson got this tape. Uh, from the production company that made the film, because like when you know when you're in the movie or whatever, they probably gave you X amount of copies or whatever. So, pretty cool story. Pretty cool that he owned it. Pretty cool that you get a signed note. Uh, and pretty cool that it sold for seventy five thousand dollars. Like everything about this story is cool. Yeah, I think VCRs are going to start popping back up, and kind of like record players have. And yeah, and yeah. I think sometime in the next like five ten years. There's going to be select movies on VHS that you can buy new. They actually, hey, they actually do do that. They, there, there was a wrestling company that released a pay per view on VHS recently. They yeah, only think, made so many copies. I think we're coming to a point where it's like all these records that are getting re released. We're going to get like old movies and select new ones, you know. And VCRs, like rec- you can buy record players at Walmart um, sometimes, and there's there's a whole section with records. I imagine in bigger cities than where I live, there's like a bigger selection, but there's a pretty big selection in my city. Yeah, it's yeah, small yeah. compared to to most, and I think uh, VHS will do the same thing. I really no, do. Vi- I hope. I hope it does. Vinyl has definitely made a huge comeback. Uh, I bought my girlfriend Nicole uh, a record player, and whenever she has a weekend off, uh, I'll come home and she'll have candles lit, and like she'll be playing, you know, records and stuff. It's kind of like a neat I, records sound different. Vinyl yeah. sounds different than digital. And VHS feels better to me. Like, when it, I watch it, it's just something about it. I don't know. Nostalgia, it's, maybe? It's the member berries. It's the member it's, berries. It's the member berries. It's the childhood memories of how it looked and how it sounded. The crackling. Like, um, I remember when you get a particularly dirty tape that you'd have to do the tracking. Uh, you'd have to, like, almost play it like a, like a musician, like a like a musical instrument. It's like, no, more to the right. No, more to the left. Like, we got to get that line out of that. 
I remember yeah. the Walt Disney thing with Mickey Mouse, the opening, the, mm-hmm. the family home entertainment for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoon video oh. tapes. Uh, just so many. And I'm Mimbo. Um, Mimbo berries yeah, vinyl, are huge. Vinyl, vinyl, vinyl does sound better. And I think uh, discs are getting too clear now, and it's almost making it look cheap because it's so clear. And yeah, I would they, have that VHS film. VHS. Like a movie. No, VHS. And plus, VHS displays better. So if you collect uh, actual physical media, VHS had a design on the cover, on the back, and on the sides. So, I've got VHS tapes I've had for like almost 22 years. And my DVDs, you know, half of them are scratched and I can't even play them anymore. And I've had them for like five to ten years or something. Yeah, d- DVDs, uh, like if you, like, especially in my drinking days, I'm sober now, but when I used to drink and I'd pop a DVD in, no telling what's going to happen to that DVD. I, I struggled just to get it in. It's like, so I'm dropping chili cheese, Seven Eleven droppings on these DVDs. I'm scra- I'm like bug bombing my apartment and it's getting this film <laughs> all over my crap. Yeah, that happened. I bug bombed my apartment one time. Uh, didn't co- didn't cover everything correctly, and then it had a film of, on some of my DVDs that I hadn't uh, put back in the boxes. Stupid idiot, uh, idiot, dumb dumb of the week. Me that day. Um, let's get into let's get into the last story of the night, last headline of the night for episode number ten. You ready, buddy? I'm ready. All right. Uh, hiker lost for 24 hours. Ignores calls from rescuers. Because the calls came up on his phone as unknown calls. <laughs> he was afraid it was it was the screen killer, you know, Ghostface. Yeah, he's like, I don't answer my landline, and I sure as hell don't answer my cell phone when it's unknown. It's either a debt collector or somebody trying to sell me a timeshare, and I'm not answering. Or asking me what my favorite scary movie is, fuck <laughs> this. I'm already so, in a scary movie. I'm lost in the fucking woods. Yeah, yeah, I'm already having a hard time. I don't need to have somebody try to sell me something while I'm lost in the woods. <laughs> um, no, so this hiker tried to return to the to the path that he lost his way on, and uh, the search crews looked for him all night, couldn't find him, so they ended up getting his phone number, tried to call him. He wouldn't answer the phone because he didn't even know people knew he was missing, so he didn't know it was rescuers. Yeah. Uh, my question is, they didn't leave a voicemail? He didn't have a little voicemail thing pop up? Where's that part of the story? <laughs> the hell is going on? He's like, I hate these unknown calls so much. I'm not even checking a voicemail for these right? bastards. Or maybe, the the, maybe, maybe the cut, the rescuers are like, you know what? He's not answering the phone. Fuck him. He's not getting a message. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so <laughs> he, uh, the end of the story is he eventually, after 24 hours, uh, found his way back to his car, and then once he, you know, was found, the rescuers are like, hey we tried to call you to figure out where you were. And he's like, oh, they were unknown calls. I didn't want to answer. So they're like, well, hey, next time you get lost, because you're clearly an idiot, <laughs> answer the calls from the unknown calls when you're lost. Answer. So, yeah. Yeah, he didn't die, so that's good. He's uh, lucky the nuclear grizzly didn't get him. God, oh, nuclear grizzly with a chainsaw. If the nuclear grizzly attack was happening to him while they had chainsaws, at least the rescu- rescuers would have been able to hear what was going on and find him based on the chainsaw noise alone. Exactly, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you got anything else before we yeah. end the show? I, there was one final thing that uh, I read about Screen 5. At the end, when Sam wipes the blade after killing the dude, Richie, yeah. apparently only her dad in the first movie, Billy Loomis, wiped the blade like that. And that's how you knew if it was him killing or Stu killing. Okay. So that's why she does that. And if that is true... That is a really cool touch, and I'll up my point to 5 out of 10 instead of 4 out of 10. Because okay. she does, she wipes it, and apparently that's how you can tell the two killers apart in the first screen. Uh, Billy would do that. Stu would not uh, wipe in it. So. I, can I give my rating uh, for screen 5? No, yeah. Oh, you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10 because... I don't like the the supernatural element they gave it uh, for S- Sam being able to see her deceased father still frozen in time at the age of 18. Uh, how he looked in Scream. So how bad. does she know what he looks like still? I don't like that they killed off a legacy character that was probably my favorite character in the entire franchise, and yours too, Josh. Um, I don't like that they shoehorned in uh, the two other legacy characters that 
they really didn't need to be like Sydney did not need to show up to Woodsboro this time. They weren't after her. She didn't need to be in the film at all. Um, I still think she's crazy. Like I didn't even see babies in the in the carriage she was pushing. So maybe she did go crazy. <laughs> yeah, she didn't need to be in the movie. Gail was in New York doing a a TV show. She didn't need to be in Woodsboro. They weren't hunting her. The only one that logically made sense into the story was Dewey because he still lived there. Um, and the other thing, spoiler alert: Dewey left Gail in New York while she was doing her show and like basically left the marriage. Based on the previous four films of how they present Dewey, Dewey's not afraid of anything, and Dewey's not that type of person. Dewey would never have left Gale, so the story doesn't make sense to me. It wouldn't have happened. Um, so, yeah, so you lose points there. Was it interesting? Was it? Was I entertained for the film? Yes. Did I did know I, that Did I know did Richie I, was a killer uh, early on? Yes. So, six and a half out of ten. I, I bought it. Uh, I'll rewatch it. It's totally, yeah. I recommend it. Uh, give us your thoughts on Scream Five in the in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. Do you agree with us? Do you like? What are your thoughts on it? And uh, if you guys have had a nuclear grizzly attack at any point in your hometown, please comment in the section below and let us know uh, how that went and how you defended yourself. I'd like to hear about that. And don't forget to go to eightiestees dot com. Absolutely, get some awesome swag from the eighties. And every other decade, really, there's amazing stuff on there. You're going to find something you love. You're going to go to checkout, and you're going to get so much money off, 30% off, slash tracks 30, promo code at checkout. Yeah. Josh, in the show, buddy. Thank you all so much for watching. Be excellent to each other. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo. Mahalo.